I recently bought this VHS deck for $50 so that I could use it to convert some VHS tapes to a digital format. In the process of buying the additional conversion products needed, I wondered if I could take this process further and turn this VHS VCR into an all-in-one VHS to digital conversion device. I'll get into the details of what I'm talking about next. What you see here is my VHS to digital conversion setup. I'm using a product named EasyCap to do the conversion and you can find it on Amazon. What it does is take the composite video signal from the VCR and converts it so an app on my Android tablet can play the video like you see here on my Samsung tablet. At this point, I record the screen as the video plays and this is how I get the MP4 file for my video archives. The Android app is on the Google Play Store, but EasyCap comes with a disk containing the Windows version. I'm not sure if there's a Mac or iOS version of the software. Although it's not that bad, I feel like this clutter of cables and accessories is something I want to eliminate as much as possible. I have an idea in mind for doing this, but I'd have to dismantle this VCR to see if what I'm thinking of will work. What I want to do has more to do with hiding the clutter, which will eliminate it, but it'll still be around, just not visible. Out of sight, out of mind. These are the individual parts that make up the conversion system. I'm hoping I can hide these parts from view and have only to deal with maybe the USB cable since I still have to connect the VCR to the computer with something. A single cable would be ideal. The only thing better would be wireless, but I've not gotten to that level of technical expertise yet. I'll open up the VCR to see how much space I'll have to work with. Equipment from back in the day never tried to be efficient with internal space, so things like televisions and VCRs had lots of empty space inside when opened. As you can see with this VCR, the EasyCap could go on either side. I guess it'll depend on how I extend the USB connection from the EasyCap so it can connect to a device outside of the case. I've decided to get a couple of parts, one of them being this mountable USB-A female-to-female adapter. It looks like I can bolt it onto the VCR case and this USB face will be on the outside. This longer side will be inside the case, which is where the EasyCap will plug into. Considering it'll be bolted in place, this should be a sturdy build. Along with that, I'll pick up this foot and a half long composite cable, which will run between the connections on the easy cap and the back of the VCR. The cable should be long enough to mount out of the way inside the case and exit the case through a cutout. I decided on a change to this build. When I first came up with the idea for this project, I was in the middle of a VHS to digital conversion and realized the mess of cables could look intimidating if I had to explain the setup to a friend or family member not familiar with electronics. The initial idea was to hide all the cables except the one the user needs to connect their device to the VCR. I felt a single cable would be pretty simple for anyone. Then I realized the apps for recording was a formality I forgot to think about. With that, I decided I would add a display to this build that would already have the required apps pre-installed. All the user would need now is their VHS tape. I'm using one of my spare Galaxy A11 Android phones as the display. I'll set everything up off camera and give some details afterwards. I've installed both apps. When searching for the yellow icon app, I use the term EasyCap. There are multiple apps with the yellow icon listed. Select the one with the single camera and is not the pro version. For the other app, I searched on the term X Recorder. If your results show lots of apps that only show the beginning of the name, look for InShot as the developer of the app. To set up the phone, I did the following things listed on the screen. Now that my plans have changed, I'm going to work on modifications starting from the composite connectors on the VCR, run the cables inside the VCR case, and end up where the EasyCap is in an ideal location to connect to the display, which will be mounted on top of the case. I'll drill the hole that the composite cable will feed through and into the case. Its starting point is just off to the left of where I'm drilling. 
I have to make a keyhole light cut somewhere in the hole I just drilled so there will be a place to store already fed cables while I feed the next cable. Without this cutout, the thickness of the cable would prevent the next plug from fitting through the hole. In test fitting the plugs through the hole one by one, everything looks good to go. This test cable is not the one I ordered, but I should be receiving that one in a few days. When I do, I can continue finishing up the internals up until the easy cap mounting. Then the last thing would be designing a screen mount on top of the VCR. The composite cable hasn't come in yet, but I can start mounting the easy cap using the mountable USB coupler I picked up from Amazon. To drill the hole to fit the coupler through, I'm using this 7 8 inch spade bit. It's a good thing I have a set of spade bits, otherwise I'd have nothing else that can drill a hole to that specific size. The tolerances on the coupler between the coupler housing and the mounting holes are really tight, so the 7 8 inch hole has to be exact. Any larger and the coupler hole would overlap the mounting hole. Any smaller and the coupler housing won't fit through the hole. I'm using goop on the inside corner of the coupler to help hold it in place along with the two flathead screws. I also want to let the glue dry for 24 hours to be sure the flexing of the plastic as I do more work on the case doesn't cause the glue to break loose from not being completely cured. I like how the new USB port looks like it was always a part of the VCR. Now that the glue has dried for the USB coupler, I'll mount the easy cap onto it. I've installed this tower made from half inch PVC to help support the end of the easy cap since it does protrude from the port a lot. Mounting the easy cap is simple. Just plug the USB A plug into the USB A port and it's done. I'm adding a dab of glue to the top to make sure the easy cap doesn't accidentally shake loose from the port. I didn't record this, but I ran the composite cable from the connectors on the back panel of the VCR in through the hole I drilled, secured it to the vents along the back of the VCR with zip ties, and now it's ready to be connected to the easy cap. I'll also zip tie the composite cables to the easy cap so they don't cause a short on the circuit board. This completes the modifications necessary inside the VCR. I'll reinstall the cover so I can now work on the display, which will be mounted to the outside top of the cover. When doing some final testing of what was constructed so far, I encountered something I didn't expect. When starting the VCR, the video signal should appear on the app installed on the device. Instead, the app waits as if there's no signal being received. Since I've already tested most of these parts, the only thing not allowing the signal to come through is either the new USB coupler that the EasyCat is plugged into, or the new cable running from the coupler to the display device. I have to do some troubleshooting. What I did to test was remove the easy cap from the coupler and run a cable directly from the easy cap to the display device. When plugged in, immediately I can see the blue screen I'd expect from a waiting VCR with the tape stop. Off camera, I had already tested the composite cable and the white USB cable and they worked fine. It looks like the coupler is what's not allowing data to pass through. Hence, it only allows charging. Even playing the tape now appears correctly. So I'm in the middle of completing the redesigned data connections between the VCR and the display device. Here where the tower was glued in place to hold up the easy cap, I've removed it and moved it closer to the back of the VCR where it serves the same purpose but now the easy cap goes through the back of the VCR instead of plugging into the coupler. There's glue in different places drying right now, and later tomorrow the revised setup should be ready. Also, now that the connector behind the VCR is a USB-A male connector instead of the female that was on the coupler, I also need a new cable end to plug into the back of the VCR. You can see the difference here where the white cable was the old one and the black cable is the new one. I've reassembled the VCR and mounted the display to the top of the case. Cable clamps are glued on to help keep the cables organized. The display is glued to a flip-up stand so it can lay flat when not in use and sit raised up for easier viewing when converting videos. I had to make a change to the display from a Galaxy A11 to a Pixel 3. 
In testing, I had a problem with no audio being recorded and found Android devices require Android version 10 or later. I did have version 10, but there must have been some minor detail that prevented it still from recording audio. So I switched to my spare Pixel 3, which uses version 12, and that fixed the problem. I'm doing this short segment as a how-to based on how I've set up my VHS converter. Start the phone, then X recorder, making sure you can see the X recorder bubble on screen. Then start EasyCap. If the title bar or menu appears in EasyCap, tap the screen to hide them for recording purposes. Insert the VHS tape and stop it if it starts playing. Tap the X recorder bubble, tap the record option, then press the play button on the VCR. My tape is one and a half hours, so the length makes for a good extended test to see how the software handles long videos. I'll let this run through at 120x time lapse. I've listed some important points to remember when using a setup like this. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section. For the 1.5 hour video recorded at 360p 30 frames per second, the size of the MP4 file is just over 1 gigabyte. Recording at 360p in X Recorder is important because you don't want double or triple the video file size due to choosing a recording value higher than 360p. Choosing something like 720p won't improve the clarity of the video because VHS recordings are at such a low quality to begin with. It's nice to watch my old videos on current technology. The quality isn't current, but I'm still glad to now have them easily available from the multiple locations I've backed them up to. I'm really glad I attempted this project. Paying a service at the low price in my area of $15 per hour of video would have been quite a bit more than what I spent to build this device. Leave your questions and comments in the comment section below. That's all I have for now, and I'll catch you in the next video.